Hello and welcome to the Confidence Mastery podcast. I'm your host, Natalie Bailey, as always. And today we are in for an amazing treat because we have the incredible Sean Bennett joining us. Welcome to the podcast, Sean. Thank you, Natalie. Thanks very much for inviting me on. I'm very, very excited to speak to you today, not only because you had me on your podcast and I really loved that conversation there. And, and what I'll actually do is put that episode in the show notes for people to find. Um, but because I know that you've done a lot in your life, you've got a lot to share in terms of overcoming imposter syndrome, increasing your confidence and putting yourself out there. So would you like to give the listeners just a little introduction to yourself, please? Uh, yeah, OK, we will do. Um, thanks very much for putting me on the spot. But I describe myself. I describe myself actually on a regular basis as a serial volunteer, Natalie. Um, so over the years, I've been a special constable. Uh, I've worked as an adult instructor with the Army Cadets. Uh, I've volunteered on and off over the years. Um, well, since 2007, actually, for one particular uh, charity or, or non-government organisation, as they prefer to call themselves. And um, I currently run a community media company, which is essentially uh, community radio right now. But we are actually going to branch into doing some community podcast projects as well, so that we're giving people an opportunity to learn about podcasting and uh, and find the voice. Yeah. What was it for you that made you go, I need to do this podcast? Not not you coming on here, your own, I mean. <laughs> right. But so my my particular podcast is called Psychics and Sidekicks, and again another um, another voluntary role that I took on. I've got a friend who is a psychic medium. Uh, I met him through the Army Cadets, and this year myself and my wife have been working alongside him, just trying to help him progress uh, his own um, sort of offering. And as I went along, and I, I sort of moved from the skeptic to what I say but at the minute, I'm kind of over the fence, but I do still describe myself as openly curious because I think there is quite often there are answers for certain things. So I always look for the logical answer first. Um, but Andy, some of the things that he comes out with that I know are to total strangers and they are so on point that there's no way that he can research and find that. Um, so it's not, it's not cold reading. It's not even warm reading. It is just receiving a message uh, with clarity, a lot of clarity. And that just that set me off on a little bit more of a learning and discovery journey of my own. I became sort of more and more open uh, and curious to it. And I started doing his tech support. So we, we decided we would actually record things for uh, his mediumship evening. So people could, at the end of the night, they could scan a QR code Within 48 hours, I then email them an MP3 copy of their reading and so they can go back to it. And what quite often happens is in that sort of five or ten minute conversation, it's very rapid fire. And so people will probably remember 10, 15, maybe 20 percent of what's been said if they're lucky. This way, they can go back over it all. They can process it. They can hear the bits that just didn't make sense in clarity and over time and they can research it and they can find the answers and quite often we're finding people coming back saying you know you mentioned this and I just thought there was nothing at all well I've spoken to my auntie and my uncle my sister whatever I've gone on google and I've done some research and, and you're absolutely on point and, and it just convinces me more and more that there's more to it than this existence that we have and then I kind of coined the phrase of being a sidekick I saw myself as Andy's sidekick because I was helping him with the tech side of it. And we got talking. It initially started about coming on the radio station and doing some um, some conversational shows with him. And um, I said, well, we're kind of progressing at pace now. How about I make a side, um, something else, and I actually make a podcast, and we'll talk about you, and we'll have you as a sort of a common thread so you keep coming back on and giving little snippets of information and, and do the background. And I can open it up and I can talk to people in all different realms of the the um, otherworldly or the paranormal, as people will, will call it. And I'm learning all the time with all of the people that I talk to. It triggers memories for me as well. Uh, even in our conversation, when you talked about dreams, and that gave me a couple of memories of dreams that I've had as a youngster. And uh, I thought, well, it, it's a great medium in which, pardon the pun, 
uh, in which we can actually <laughs> share my learning with other people and give other people an opportunity to come on and share theirs and their experiences and to collectively learn from it. I find it fascinating, um, as you know, and the more I look into the spiritual side of the world and energy and, you know, what happens, the more I go down what, what people call a rabbit hole and think, well, holy fuck, there is so much more to us <laughs> than just us being physically here. And when you are open enough to have these conversations and go, this is what I'm exploring and not being worried about what other people might think. I think that's a lot of what holds people back with this kind of stuff because they think people are going to think they're crazy, but you found the confidence to share this and to help other people understand the paranormal for, well, well maybe it's yeah. paranormal. Like, yeah. So what, what gives you that confidence to be able to help people from this side of it? Just the fact that I actually like to talk to other people about what they've experienced and what their opinions and the thoughts and the beliefs are. Um, I'm not afraid of challenging that either and saying, you know, well, why is that? Or what about the alternatives? Uh, and giving people an opportunity. And, and that's right through from, you know, from somebody who's an out and out believer to somebody who's um, into the scientific side of it, for example, and they want to do the paranormal investigations. There's a lot of technology there. One of my big questions is, the people that make the technology that finds the ghosts or whatever you want to call it and you know and communicates with them and, and give, gives them the ability to communicate with us, how do they know that the answers that they get or the results that they get are the results that they actually expected? You know, so we're challenging the technology as well, and we, we want to put people um, on the spot, really, and get them to explain it, and, and maybe the fact that they just get something other than what they actually anticipated is actually the answer but I, i'm i'm very much in the you know i want to drill down into this I'm, i don't want to know all of the trade secrets but you you've got this device that comes up with sound or a reading well how do you know that that reading is what it is or what you're saying it is and then you go right to the other end of the spectrum and you've got the people who think it's all a lot of bollocks and they just don't believe in it and what i'd like to do is say well that's fine because that is your opinion, that's your belief, and that's what you've been brought up to uh, to appreciate or understand. But you could put all three in a room or on a podcast, and we all come together and we just have a general open conversation. At some point, the scientific person is going to touch on something, but more than likely the psychic or the medium will pick up on an energy or on a message or something and be able to pass that on to the person that's the skeptic whether they choose to accept it or not is another matter but at least if they're open enough to have a conversation on the understanding that something might be said that you can't explain or you weren't expecting then so be it they can go away and say no i'm still a skeptic that's fine mm. but thank you very much for coming along or they might actually go oh uh, i never realized that tell me more and and just like me you know it opens it up my mum and my nan both went to spiritualist church for a lot of years. Never interested me whatsoever. But in this last few years, I've just become more and more open to, um, I suppose, really just, just open to other opinions and open to new information. We never stop learning. I mean, I'm 55 and I'm still, I'm probably learning as much or more now than I have done for a lot of years. Be a forever student, I say. There's always something new to learn, something new to experience. And I really like the thought of that three-way conversation of, yeah. I think you're nuts, I'm scientific, and uh, I'm I'm here and I feel this. And I don't think there's enough of those kinds of conversations that go on in terms of, I'm open to hearing your view. Yeah. What I've seen a lot of, and I know that, we all have, well, not all of us, a lot of people have seen, especially over the past three years, this is my opinion, I'm not listening to you. Yeah. But if Yeah, very, you very much so, the, a lot of people have. have yeah, if you should have the discussion, like, I want to talk to people that I don't agree with. 
because I would like to understand their perspective, their point of view. Why do you believe what you do? So help to educate me on your thoughts and opinions and be open to listening to mine too, rather than just shutting people down. And which is actually what I used to do. I'm like, no, you're chatting a load of bollocks. <laughs> I yeah. think I, you learn when I look at Certainly. And I, I look at, um, let's use Darren Brown as an example. I think he's brilliant. I really do. But he's an entertainer. And what he does, the, the end product of an evening of watching or um, being in the presence of Darren Brown, it to me is programming. It's it's mind programming. He's, he is setting up the audience to receive a, a predetermined end m- message. And you will get there because you follow that journey and you buy into the concept. So I don't see him as being like a psychic medium in that sense or, or anything. He's an entertainer and he's got skill set around manipulating people's minds. Where I have seen a complete stranger talk to a complete stranger and I've heard him talk to them about... Um, let me give you an example, actually. Andy, uh, at one evening, was talking with a gentleman who started off the evening it was quite sort of closed, arms crossed, didn't really give a lot of feedback. After a little while, he opened up. Um, but then Andy was was stood and he was looking to his one side as if he was having a conversation with somebody that wasn't there, of course. Um, and he's like, why are you showing me that? What's the relevance of that? And, and he says, I'm going to give you this. He says, your mum's showing me something to do with a flower, a rose. Um, but she's got this bucket and she's put some ash in it and some, he says, forgive me, but it smells like, like pig shit or something in there. And she's mixing it up. And she says, you need to, you know, look after the rose. And um, at the end of the evening, Jack came along and he, he talked to us and he said, the bit that you said about the flower, he says, we have a yellow rose in the garden, which mum uh, nurtured and tended. And she used to get ash and compost and mix them up in a bucket and spread them around the base of the rose. And this is the rose. And he showed him a picture of the rose on his mobile phone. And that's two complete strangers in a pub. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen through manipulation. No, it doesn't. There's no such thing as a coincidence either, I don't believe. I don't believe in coincidence. I'd made a plan (laughs) um, of action steps that, we were doing today for our business and I had an email from one of my mentors that said this is today's action which was exactly what I'd already planned to do yeah and I had no idea that 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 was what that today's point was in that was part of that challenge like "Mm, no such thing as a coincidence that's supposed to happen today that's your synchronicity coming in um and I I can I'll tell you one about manifesting when we get to that point as well but uh, I'm sure yeah, I know the opportunity will come up because I know what we're like as a conversation. So yeah, let's carry on, and I'll get to the point, and I'll I'll, I'll absolutely blow your brain again. And that, well, that's on personal experience rather yeah. than somebody else's. It's incredible what can happen. Mm-hmm. Where did you find the shift in yourself from going from I'm not interested in this to I'm more open to the conversation? I think it started uh, with the Army Cadets. It was probably about four or five years ago when we were doing that. And Andy came along. He was the entertainment on the night. So the, the all the adult instructors, um, what you end up with doing is uh, a couple of uh, staff will be on duty. So they're um, looking after the cadets if anything goes off. And then they're generally on duty. Everybody else on the evening, uh, we stood down, we're in the mess. And there was this strange bloke in there talking to the um, company commander. And then he introduced him and he started just talking to people and he was talking to people who I'd known for a couple of years by this point and felt that I knew reasonably well and started telling them things. And it's like, how does he know that about that person? You know, he's literally walked in the room a couple of hours ago and we've all come in an hour ago and now he's telling somebody about a caravan on his grandma's drive and this and the other. And, you know, seeing grown men rushing out in tears because they just can't cope with the information it's just it's an emotional overload you know people actually have to go into it being prepared for a message otherwise you know when you pay your money you're going because you've got that expectation uh for for us i think at the time it was a case of 
we weren't expecting that. We didn't know that. So it was it was all a little bit, well, it was a lot out of the blue. So I can understand their emotional um, reactions to things. Um, so that kind of, that started me. It was like, bloody hell, this guy's good. You know, where's he getting this from? And we saw Andy a couple of times on and off over the years. We've always sort of stayed in touch, um, but not on a regular basis, but we have always sort of every now and again a message on on uh, Messenger and stuff or a phone call. And I just started talking to him last year about um, doing something on the radio, and that was where it all started. And it's it's just been accelerated progress, really, from the start of this year. That's amazing. See, for me, I don't imagine those kind of establishments to have those kinds of arms, if you like. Yeah. I mean, you used to say yeah. about, you know, being a, a constable, being in the army, this is like, this is what you do. This is the logic. This is this. And, and that's how you go about it. So to come from that kind of environment and then to go, oh, hang on a minute. What what else is there beyond this regiment is a pretty powerful thing. Yeah. And Andy himself worked as, um, well, he was in the army as a youngster, um, but he, he worked as a prison officer uh, for a good few years as well, which is where he met our company commander. And, um, you know, so he's used it in that environment as well. Uh, you know, he's on and off uh, a similar age to me now, so he's probably been practising uh, for 20-odd years, but he know, he's known about the abilities since uh, being a youngster. Amazing. It does blow. It does blow your mind, and the more you look into it, and the more you're open to it. Yeah. I had um a Reiki session the other week, and the feedback I got from it, I was like, "Whoa, what?" Yeah. <laughs> and this was a remote <laughs> one as well, and the stuff that came back, and I was like, "Okay, yep, that makes sense." How did you know that? How how could you possibly feel all of this? And it all just made so much sense to me. Yeah. That. That I think, not even I think, I know it reaffirmed that there's so much more to the physical than 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 we, I suppose, yeah. intentionally believe. And, you certainly are. Well, this mm -hmm. lady said she felt something in in my left leg and couldn't figure out just whether it was my ankle, my knee, my hip, and uh, my left knee. When I bend, it sounds like a crisp packet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it doesn't hurt. It's not painful but it, there is something wrong there. And that's not something that's common knowledge. Well, now it is. It's got us out of the podcast. Now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I make you feel money, like you wouldn't know. Like this lady, she did not know that. So I used to think if you would go and see a psychic, that they'll have figured something out like before. Like, they'll have done some research somehow, like if you book something in. But after that, I'm like, nah. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. I think. Well, I have had a conversation with a lady who um who is a skeptic, and she she sort of sets out to expose um the the phony celebrity psychics. Um, she's got stuff up on YouTube and that. So that was quite an interesting conversation, and and I respect her position and her mm. opinion. But on first hand experience with Andy and with other people as well, even Amy, um, who you recall from my launch episodes, Amy Barrington, um, she was doing something. She's trying to sort of raise some money to get a new computer, and she was she put out a bit of an offer for readings. So I said, Amy, I'll I'll book a reading with you. You know, she said, like, thanks. What you're looking for to do it in doing this? And I said, I'm I'm looking to help you. Basically, I'm, I'm booking the reading to help you to raise some of the money to get your computer. And I said, but I'm open. You know, this, you just tell me what you come up with uh, yeah. and I'll be as, as honest as I can with you about anything. And she pretty much gave me connections with my granddad and my dad, both of whom have been dead for, for quite a number of years. My dad for 20 odd years now um, and granddad for about 13. Um. She nailed that I used to go fishing with my dad. And there's nothing on my profile, you know, so she couldn't have read up on that and anything about going fishing. Because I, I just, I've never shared anything like that at all on my socials. 
And uh, there, there were various elements around my dad and, and, and granddad about characters that she absolutely was spot on with. And this is somebody who I've, I've had several conversations with, but it all started off with a podcast. <laughs> It's, it is, it's phenomenal. Um, and you touched earlier on manifestation. I have a bit of scepticism around this purely because you can't just sit there and will something to happen. You have to take some action towards it as well. However, yep. I also don't believe in coincidence, okay. as, I, as I said earlier. So I believe that everything happens for a reason. Like I was saying about that email that came to me today. And that was what I'd already planned to do today. So yes. it's maybe, I don't know, there's some kind of manifestation there, but there's also action behind it. So what for you has happened in that realm? I'm very glad you asked that because I, if, if you hadn't, I was thinking of a way of working this conversation in because <laughs> the is about to just go like this, honestly. Um so I, I'm not, I've never been big on meditation. Uh, I've been doing this actively trying to meditate, I will say trying to meditate, for um, a number of months now. Uh, but I tend to do most of mine of, of an evening, I'll go to bed, I'll put the iPad on, put it on a timer, and I'll put some meditation stuff on. And I've listened to various different types to try and see which one settles and works best. Now... I don't feel that I can close my eyes in, as they, they talk about in some of these cases and visualize something. So if somebody says, like, you do this, do that, close your eyes, imagine the apple, blah, blah. And I shut my eyes and I, I just see black or maybe a little bit of an, an, an off cloudy color, uh, you know, off color of maybe a white. Sometimes I've seen sort of a, a yellow or a purpley color. And I'm like, but I'm not visualizing a physical hole, not even like an outline of one. So I'm thinking, I can't meditate, I can't do this, don't bloody work for me. Um, I say now, it's like I've, I've probably got some form of blockage going on that I need to unlock uh, to be able to get um, to get better results of it. However, manifestation. So my latest venture, um, about to start, my latest voluntary activity is um, a men's mental health talk support group and we're calling it monday nights but with a k so it's a play on words but it's looking back more at the sort of the medieval um origins of knights and the support and coming together as um, an army of men as it were so we'd had conversation i i actually had a colleague in work in my day job who had attempted suicide not too long ago and um that sort of just set me thinking about things a little bit more and there's an Andy's Man Club near us. Now, everybody's heard of Andy's Man Club just about. Um, he was going there, and, and he talked about them being in short space. So we had a conversation about whether they wanted to move and utilise the community hub, where myself and uh, my wife Donna do some work. They like the space, think it's great. It's got capacity, but it's close. It's probably too close to where they already are, so maybe not. And then there's the other side of um, they want it for nothing. And you understand that. But as a small community facility, that facility needs money in order to have its doors open for other activities and things to go on. So we had a bit of a dilemma. We had a conversation with a couple of guys who were doing some um, mental health podcasting already with us. And we we struck up a conversation about whether we should do something of our own. If we're going to put all the effort in to raise money, then we should do it in our own name and, and do something. So I um, I went to bed. A couple of weeks ago now, I went to bed on Thursday night, put my meditation on, and actively, before I went to sleep, asked for uh, some form of sign or guidance that what we were doing was the right thing to do, and that we weren't, I wasn't being sort of selfish in my thought process of not going with AMC, but coming up with something of our own. On Friday morning, on my way to work, I ended up turning my car around and spending just over an hour on a bridge, locked arm in arm with somebody who was threatening to jump off it. Ooh. Now, I asked for a sign. 
<laughs> wasn't expecting sign. that. No. I wasn't expecting that. That can't have been easy to deal with for yourself either. Um, it, it is challenging. At the time, it was autopilot. Now, I've done mental health first aid training, so th there's there's a, an extreme amount of logic that kicks in. And I think probably my past experience of um, working with the Army cadets, because you've got lots of kids that have got lots of challenges, um, working with the police, dealing with lots of people who have lots of challenges. <laughs> so the actual in the moment was just, it was autopilot, Natalie. You know, I saw a couple of people leaning over this bridge on a, on a sort of a second take to see why they were leaning over the bridge. I spotted the guy on the other side sat, sat down. Went up the road a little bit, spun around, went back, just literally hopped out of the car, went across, introduced myself first, told him who I was, told him I was a mental health first aider, asked him his name, and we got him talking, we got him on his feet, and then we were able to sort of opposite sides of him, lock arms with him, make sure he was secure and wait for police and ambulance to, to come along. And so everything was fine. I think really for me it was just the it's the realisation afterwards you know, you just have every now and again, you just have this emotional hunch that, you know, it says, do you realise what's just happened, what you've just done? You know, and, and so I did it a couple of times, I got quite emotional um, during that day. Mm. But at the end of the day, it was, you know, it was just like, well, I went to bed Thursday night asking for a sign. I couldn't have asked for any more of a sign than what I experienced on the Friday morning. So mm. off we went. Give me goosebumps. <laughs> it makes me sad that there there are people that feel that way, that there is no, no other way. And yep. that stigma of talking about the issues that are going on is pretty detrimental. And like I've I've got a lot of clients and I'm very friendly with my clients, but I'm there to help them ultimately. Yeah. And they know that if they've got something wrong and I know them well enough to know if something's wrong, if they haven't said something. Mm -hmm. And there's been a number of times where I've contacted them saying, can you book a one-to-one -one in? Because we've not yeah. spoken for a while. And then I've got them on the phone and I've said, what's wrong? I've noticed this, this and this. And yep. then they're like, how do you know this? And there's a lot of that energy connection and really knowing somebody and understanding the way they work and when they're withdrawn and what, you know, when they're louder and like all of those sorts of things. Yeah. But to be able to, to do that with people you know is very different to seeing that from a stranger and being a kind enough and loving enough person to go, I'm going to go and help with that, even though there are already people there, is what makes you a, an amazing human being. When I was at the gym, so well done for that. Um, not that any of us don't do this for like the well yeah. done or congratulations. I, I but... Thank you. <laughs> I, I think anybody, well, I say that, you know, and I, I would say, I, I think anybody, that's that's got a reasonable amount of confidence about them would step in and, and intervene you know and fortunately two people saw him before i even got there and and are already set about that intervention um but but you do look and occasionally there was the odd thought it's like you, know, you see all these people going by and they're all you know they're all happy to have a look and you just wonder how many people went by in just in those few minutes, it's quite a busy road. How many people went by in those few minutes before I did, mm. and before I made the decision to turn around and go back and help? Um, but each to their own, you know. If if you if you're right to do it, you'll do it. But some people don't have that confidence. No, they don't, or they don't know what to say, or they think somebody mm. else will do it, or they they don't even see it. When I was mm. at gym number two today, I'm. Um, it overlooks a dock. So I'm doing cardio, which I absolutely hate. And I saw someone that was running on the other side of the dock and they fell over as they went around the corner. And I was on the phone to a client and I literally stopped the sentence. I was like, holy fuck, what's just happened? 
Um, and then I saw someone coming towards them and someone stopped and then a couple of other people stopped and not one person that, even when there were four people there, not one person that was going around that corner didn't stop. And yeah. I thought, I'm really pl- pleased to see that because she, I think it was a she, she was far away, I couldn't I couldn't tell. Yeah. Um, that the people had to, because she took, she took ages before she sat up. And I thought, if somebody hadn't stopped, I'd have had to have gone and run around the dog myself and just <laughs> quite quite a long way. And I don't like running, yeah. but I would have done yeah. if I'd seen that the person hadn't been helped. And luckily she got up and 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 walked away. And that that was that was an accident. Um but I think we all need to find in us the confidence to help strangers when you see they're struggling when you see there's something wrong. It's like even like the little things. I mean, what you what you did there is a huge thing, and hopefully has massively helped that person's life. And mm. hopefully they'll come and join your new venture, and then they'll be able to help other people. But even like if you see someone that needs help with their shopping or like their pram, they can't get it up the yeah. stairs and things like that, and. I all have this thing and I always say smile at strangers like say hello to people you never know what's going on in someone's life and this is what I don't like about self-checkout and I I pretty much refuse to use them because I like to say to someone have a nice day yeah because you just don't know what's going on in people's lives and it's it's that thing of like having eye contact that human to human interaction so that when we do kick the bucket we've got something and people to go back to and and almost look after funnily enough um i don't know if funny is not the right word um i look at my facebook memories every day because i like to see progress and just over three years ago i had a car accident in barbados i was going to the gym same route i used to take every day for eight o'clock in the morning um i hit some a motherfucking huge pothole and all I remember is actually climbing out the car but it rolled and rolled and rolled was facing the other direction and then was on the side so I had to climb out of the passenger seat window Mm -hmm. and then I remember about five guys coming over pushing the car up and um I called the car hire company I called my mum because I'd managed to leave my phone on my bed somehow and then I started to call my dad. There was no Wi-Fi in in the the garage. This garage, this tiny little garage behind about five houses. Um, and then the car hire company came, gave me a new car, took the other car away, and I just drove home. So I had no medical, no police, no ambulance, no nothing. <laughs> um, and I didn't realise that a few like, days later, like I probably had concussion because I slept yeah. on and off for about three days, but something or someone was looking after me that day because I came out and I climbed out and I had two bruises on my legs and considering how much just how much the car rolled made me think holy fuck like what's going on so seeing that and having that memory come up and me being reminded of the fact that I am alive and they're probably, you know, that energy, something was looking after me. So being able to go, what good can we do whilst we're alive and whilst we have this time to help people going through those problems, um, I think makes a massive difference of being able to be grateful for the life we have now and then whatever is is in the afterlife. Absolutely. And and who knows, but there's definitely something more than this. And um well, the lady that I've spoken with recently, and she, she calls it a meat suit. So our current existence is a meat suit um, because, you know, the, the energy exists and moves around and circulates. Uh, and this is just our way of being present here and now. The energy will go on to be something else, somewhere else, or someone else afterwards. There's a lot of like past life therapy and like regression therapy and stuff like yeah. that. And I think, I think it's fascinating. I I haven't done that yet. It's something I'd love to do because having 
gone through periods of my life where things have been really bad and I just used to think the world conspired against me. I was like, I must have been Hitler in my past life for this to be happening yeah. to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've only got a past a life. Person. Um, but um, it, it wasn't successful at all. Uh, and again, I put that down to my lack of being able to visualise. Aphantasia or aphantasia is actually a condition where you can't visualise things. So, And it's not that long since been recognised. A few years, but um, not not very, very long uh, as a uh, as a condition that people would openly talk about. And I only found out about it on a TikTok video a few months ago. Um, but in attempting to do past life regression, we were doing it remotely. And uh, Robbie, who was uh, trying to, to do this, he, he was talking me through all this, right? Closing your eyes, doing the visualising, and then I was like, I was really, really sort of, I'd got my eyes shut, and I was really focusing, like staring into the back of my eyelids to try and visualise what he was telling me that I had to, I should be seeing. I was like, Robbie, I'm just not getting anything. And so he says, right, okay, then just in your own time, just open your eyes, come back, and, you know, we'll we'll go from there. And he says to me, something really weird was going on then. Um, he was just doing this on his mobile phone on um, on Messenger video, and he says, I was looking at my phone, he says, and, and it started zooming in on my face. And he says, but my phone, the front camera on my phone doesn't do zoom, but it was zooming in on me. And I was like, oh, that's really weird. So we had another go, and I said, Let, I'll, record, I'll do a screen recording on my iPad. And we'll see if it does it again. And it it did. And again, he was we were at a certain point where he was saying, visualize this, do this. And I was really sort of staring at the back of my eyes, really concentrating, trying to focus, not getting anything. And, and it was doing it again. Now, the only thing we didn't have is we didn't have audio because the audio was taken up with the messenger. So mm. it recorded the screen and you could see this. And it was just like sort of the top of his head and his eyes. And the cat let the camera was kind of good doing this and zooming in on him. And I said, the only thing I can think is that there's some energy going on there where I was focusing really hard to focus, and that was impacting on your camera on your phone. Oof. I guess it's another goosebumpy thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there are some bizarre things that happen. That yeah. I, you know, some of it's explainable, some of it's not. But I think the most important thing is having a confidence within yourself to explore the external possibilities. Um, I, I believe, you know, we're all born, we're all connected to a human being. Yeah. In the very beginning, and so I was having this conversation with someone a little while ago. And it just made me go, fuck, actually, we are all connected via an umbilical cord before we come into the world. So we all have this connection with the mother that bears. Bear yeah. And then we go through life and we shed skin, we grow, we cut our hair, we trim our nails, and that all goes back into the earth. And then we die and we go back into the earth. And then we eat from the earth. So there is this cycle of we must be connected to other people and to the earth and, and all of it that is beyond a lot of comprehension. Um, if you have you ever seen the um, fantastic fungi? Yes. Yes. You uh, were talk you about won't, this before. Well, they interviewed you for psychics yeah. and sidekicks. So yeah. You, uh, you got me to watch that. Yeah. Um. And I said this to somebody else recently because they hate mushrooms. Like, they can't bear them. I don't like the taste of flavour, the texture. Mm -hmm. But when you really look into that and you delve into that whole connection of planetary evolution, um, energy, there's so much more. That, well, we could probably sit here and talk for hours and hours on end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's the network, isn't it, of how it all becomes interconnected and the roots and how it all sort of spreads and spawns and and connects. So it's really, really fascinating. I um I think it's probably within 
the first not the first weekend after we spoke, but the following week, um, we sat down and watched that. I was told quiet. I was t- I tell everyone to watch that. That's <laughs> <laughs> why I brought it up again. <laughs> So tell us more about the launch of what you're doing and your nights. So the Monday nights, yeah. Um, so it follows the same principles as Andy's Man Club. Uh, we've got one or two other little things that we want to do because um, and, and I wanted to do something actually with the community radio station. Uh, I had this idea of uh, initially I called it Motor Mouse, M-O-T-R, Mouse for Men on the Radio. And that was because we started in COVID and we got one or two presenters and volunteers who openly admitted that they had had some challenges from a mental health um, and, and even illnesses in cancer um, survivors and things like that. And we saw it as a good opportunity to sort of get together and and, um, and get the conversations going. And that never really took off. And part of it was that I'm, I'm sort of constantly looking at other things that we can do and trying to progress. And I, I'm a, a good ideas person. I like to throw in an idea, hopefully that get enough people enthused that they go, right, I'll run with that, Sean, you know, and it's got momentum and it can grow independently of me. Um, and it, it just never really got there, but we, we've had sort of two or three dis- discussions over the last couple of years. And then um, two guys, Roger and Carl came talking to me about wanting to record some, podcast because Roger's a counsellor the demand for his services and his time far outweighs his capacity and he said I want to do something where it can be shared with multiple people uh, and he said so podcast or uh, or video um, you know YouTubes and stuff like that so well, let's start with audio it's the quickest and dirtiest way of doing it got them set up and um, and they pop in pretty much every Saturday now and, and record a couple of episodes um we're like three naughty school boys there when we get together. We usually spend, they come for a couple of hours and we spend about the first hour, hour and a quarter having a laugh, chewing the fat, taking the piss. And, you know, it's like, this is a great way of doing things and you know, we should do more of it. And if we can survive um, the first hour of our own time, actually knuckle down, we could do something with other people. And that was how the idea started to, to spawn. And um, Monday nights were actually the only night that we could do something when we looked at the the calendar for the community hub that was the only night available it does clash with uh, andy's man club because they always do it on a monday but i'm not really concerned with that because we're doing a similar thing and there's plenty of demand and scope for it so the the whole idea is if, you know, if you've got some sort of mental health challenges uh, or concerns and you want to come along and talk to people we're not providing therapy we're just providing a little bit of um comradeship and and an opportunity to just get it off your chest throw some positive questions get the little bits and niggly bits off your chest and then a bit more positivity um i had an idea of um pies peas and podcasts we've changed it now to pies peas and points of view but that can be something that we do every now and again on on a monday evening the sort of the second half of the sessions we'll get pies and peas going and just sit around and you know get ideally we'll get different um, butchers and things and bakers to send us their pies that's the ultimate aim is that they send us a pie for free and we rate it and we'll end up with a league table of, uh, of, of various that. pies <laughs> <laughs> but do a little bit of good and have uh, you know have some fun in in, in and around the uh the whole thing and just well, like I like to cook. i'll send you a pie <laughs> <laughs> We never made a pie, but I like to cook, so I'll definitely send yeah. you a pie. Excellent. <laughs> you can make my pie. Oh, Jesus Christ. That sounds amazing. If there's anything else I can help you to do with that, please just do hit me up, send me yeah. a message. Or Thank you. I'm happy That's to help promote that for you. I think it's such an important thing. Um, what would you say to the people that are worried about being judged through opening up like that because i know that a lot of people don't speak out about their mental health because of a lack of confidence yep um don't come with that in mind really is come along on a monday night and join a bunch of other blokes who like to talk shit who like to have a laugh who who will take the piss out of each other as long as they go home at the end of the night with a smile on their face Mm. you know and as you build your confidence and that was the whole thing with the motor mouse idea originally was we're all strangers. 
we were all working together with a common cause because we'd, we'd all come together with all different walks of life. We were all doing it from home uh, on the radio station. And it, I would just wanted people to come together to get to know each other more. And that would be the concept of the Monday's night, Monday night session, rather. You can come along. You could just sit and listen if you want. Listen to other people, because if you if you hear about somebody else's problems, you can sit and process without having to have a conversation with anyone else. Go, actually, my life's not as shit as I thought it was. Sometimes just listening mm. is helpful, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And then That's... there are so many other so many other spin off activities. Uh, you know, mental health walks. Um, there's a, a group that we'll be able to tap into. They do a frame of mind walk, and um, so Don has been putting a, a package together with a couple of other organisations at the hub. And theirs will be an eight-week program, yeah. and there's various things that um, that they're doing walks that will teach people how to do editing. And um, but the frame of mind walk is go on a walk, take a camera, take your phone, take some pictures that reflect how you're feeling while you're out there. Come back, and over the sessions um, at the hub, they'll they'll then learn to edit the photographs or print it off and get it framed. And at the end of the year, we'll have a, a, a gallery exhibition and prizes for the best. I like that. That's really nice. I've seen where I am in London, they have a men's walk and talk that they, they do every week. And mm -hmm. I love to see that. And they put a picture and and it just gives you a space to listen, talk or do something. I really yeah. like the idea of the, the photos as well. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. That, it's just, it's, it's, bring people it's together taking one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's taking the one thing and expanding it because, you know, just coming together and have a conversation is one thing. But in, you could talk about cars, you could talk about bikes, talk about photography. I mean, I'm into, I like my drones. Um, I've got fancy 360 camera for doing virtual tours with. You know, there's all sorts of stuff. We can talk about gadgets and um, the, if they could shoot me up for long enough, somebody else can have a go. But at some point, there might be somebody in that group because oh, actually I could use that. You know, or I'd love to learn how to fly a drone. Oh, actually, come down here one Saturday afternoon. You know, we've got a massive uh, the site itself. Uh, community hubs on a, a miners' welfare site, and it's about nine acres big. There's, you know, there's um, the sports facilities. There's an open field, um, but we can use a sub two fifty drone. There's, there's no problem. And I'm a trustee, so I can grant permission. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So we say we've got lots of bases covered. Amazing. I love that. And I love the whole premise of what you're doing, what you do for yourself, the way you've overcome some things for yourself to be able to just, you know, put out your podcast, go and talk on other people's, be able to put help together for other people. And I, I always find that when you help other people, you also help yourself. What's Absolutely been, you do, yeah. for you, what's been the most beneficial thing for you personally doing all of this? Do the podcast or just all of it rolled into all one? the podcast and, and, and all of it. <laughs> because I think it's important to acknowledge your own achievements as well as what you do for others. Yeah. I think generally is uh, probably developing my own ability to deal with imposter syndrome, you know, and I think I've mentioned it before to you. I, I live in imposter syndrome every day. You know, I'll have meetings at work and, and I sit and I talk and listen to all the people and it's like, one day somebody's going to go, you know what, you actually don't know half as much as you think you do. And, you know, it's, it, it is a limiting belief. But um, I've always described myself as being shy when I was in the Army Cadets. Um, the uh, Deputy Commandant, who was part of the training team, he said to me in the bar one night, he says, so um, how do you think you got on then, Mr. Bennett? And I was like, oh, yeah, all right. He says, what, what, what's your sort of biggest strength and your weakness and that? And I says, well, my weakness is like he's being shy. And then he just looked at me sideways glance. He went, I think you better fucking look up shy on Google, young man. <laughs> he says, you're not shy. <laughs> I was like, but I am actually. You know, I won't automatically walk into a room and feel comfortable. And and I see that as being a shyness, but some of what I do then as a result of that is to combat that shyness. You know, I will go and talk to somebody. Uh, generally, it would be somebody who I think would be least likely to want to talk to me 
because I think if I can overcome that and I can talk to that person, I can strike up a conversation, uh, then everybody else in the room is easy pickings. Mm. And it's just a coping mechanism. And uh, probably another thing that I did for myself was um, going on some training about learning how to do public speaking. In my volunteer, voluntary work, uh, what I want to do is I just want to help other people. And that's one of the big things is uh, I see, and I had a conversation with an old boss of mine about not wanting to chase the next big sale or anything, but I felt that I would achieve my goals by helping other people achieve theirs. And um, he just said to me, oh, that's very altruistic. Are you religious at all? No, I'm not actually, not in any way, shape or form, but I don't see what that's got to do with it. I just want to see other people do well. I want to help them achieve what they want to do. And um, so I've, I've done various things. I've, I've done some coaching training. Um, not yet have the balls to jump into that camp properly. Um, we'll but talk about that doing, and make that happen. But, but doing, <laughs> doing public speaking. Uh, so I joined Toastmasters while I was working away in Bristol. I decided I wanted um, a, a little bit of something else to do that would benefit me and other people. Um, rather than just sitting in my room on a night watching TV or going on Facebook and stuff like that. So I joined Toastmasters um, and I absolutely loved it. I've not done anything about rejoining Toastmasters up here just because I've got so many things going on at the minute, but it's definitely uh, on the agenda that when I get some free time, then I'll I'll go back to it. Uh, I did some training with a gentleman called Richard McCann, who's a fantastic public speaker and trainer. And... Um, that really helped me. And one of the things that I did on my icebreaker with Toastmasters, so they go through various bits, you do a little bit of a, an introduction. But um, everybody gets to do an, an icebreaker talk. And what I did was I had a nucleus of an idea. I had the benefit of a long drive home. And so I just took my idea and I just had my talk and I had to get it down from 12 minutes to five minutes. <laughs> just by cutting out a lot of crap, which is really easy to do. But on the night that I did the icebreaker, um, one of the guys who I'd seen talking and I'd seen, I thought, wow, he's confident. And he came to me and he's like, that was brilliant. How did, you know, how did you prepare for that? What did you do? How, you know, was it scripted? And I went, no, I didn't actually. I've just like had an idea, rehearsed it in the car a couple of times and uh, then delivered it. He went, Fucking hell, he says, I can't believe that. One of my bits of feedback is to be less scripted, you know, and, and to practice doing it without a script. He says, and you come on your first bloody night and you do that and you deliver it like that. And it's like, but in a way, um, I'm a lazy person because I don't want to have a script and to have to practice a script and to run to time, you know, mm. by the word, by the sentence, by the paragraph or whatever. So I'm very much more of... Um, get the idea get the bullet points metaphorically speaking the bullet points in my head yeah. talk about them build it up into the story and then you know, put it back expand it or whatever and you know it never comes out the same on the night but you get the point across and, and that's the way I like to do them I'm the same with that it's we're not actors speaking is different you don't yeah, you completely. don't you don't need a script it's that free flow and the next time you do it, something else will have happened in between for maybe some lines to change, for some yeah. new story to come in. And that's important because it keeps it relevant. You know, public speaking is so feared by people, but actually the people in the audience, most of them want you to succeed. They want you to do well because they most want to learn. Well. Like They're there for a reason. Yeah. And I think that's a really important thing for people to remember if – they're worried about speaking, even if it's one-to-one. -one. The one the other person doesn't know what you're going to say, so it doesn't matter if you forget. But the other person wants to listen to you. They, they're they there for a reason. It's like any of the men coming to your Monday nights club. If it's a club, can I call it a club? Group. But club, Group. yeah, whatever. It's fine. You know? Um, I just use the word club a lot. Not not like the old days of clubbing, but mm -hmm. <laughs> being a member <laughs> of. And yeah. it's having that confidence to go and listen, go and speak, 
and say what you're comfortable with and then maybe just push out of your comfort zone even just a little bit one time and then the next time you'll be able to do more yeah yeah ah i think there's been so many amazing things that we've spoken about today not that i'm biased well yeah of course i'm biased because both of our podcasts are amazing (laughs) (laughs) um Thank you so much for spending this time with us and for the listeners. Where can people find, follow you and online stalk you? Because we're fans of online stalking here, just not in-person stalking. Fantastic. Well, uh, I try to make it really, really easy. So at seanbennett.uk, across most of the socials. Um, If it doesn't work with the dot, just drop the dot and do at seanbennett.uk. I'm on Facebook. um, So facebook.com forward slash Monday Nights group. But that's Monday nights with a K uh, for the Monday nights session. Uh, Psychics and Sidekicks is the podcast name. It's also the Facebook group as well. And um, yeah, I'm on there. I'm on LinkedIn. I just do linktree.com forward slash Sean Bennett UK, I think. And uh, (laughs) there's links to most of the things in there, even a couple of my old, uh, old podcasts. And, you know, I think I've, I've grown so much in doing this particular podcast that I look back at the others and I think, oh, cranky, they're a bit cringeworthy, but I am not taking them down because it's all part of the journey. All the growth, um, isn't it? No, yeah. No, nobody's first podcast is as good as the 31st. We so, are... Yeah, there there I think this is a 190th episode wow. on the Confidence Mastery podcast and people still listen to the first one. Yeah. So it is always growth. Like, leave the stuff up. Let people see how much you have grown so that they can see how much they can grow too. Yeah, completely. Um, so I'll put all of the links in the show notes, of course. Thank you. And um, I highly recommend that everybody listening follows your podcast and comes and find you. If you could leave people with one tip to be more confident in themselves, what would it be? Just have a go. You know, whatever it is that you're frightened of, put a date down and say, by this date, I'm going to have done this. Um, my example would be public speaking. So I've, I've set out, I want to be able to do public speaking at some point to be able to give people confidence to try things. And it's a, having done the training last year uh, with Toastmasters and with Richard McCann, it's taken me all of that time until literally about three or four weeks ago when I did my first official um, public speaking engagement. And it was to the um, St. John's Ambulance Cadets. And it was just a bunch of kids that are going through a a fantastic time right now because they are already entering the world of of CPD, the continuous professional development as teenagers. And, you know, they don't realize what they're doing. They don't realize the strength and the power and the capabilities that they are giving themselves by doing that. And uh, I loved absolutely every minute of it. And I talked all about volunteering. And, uh, you know, I've done a lot of volunteering over the years. Nowhere near as much as some people do. But I've gained an awful lot of experience from it. And I just want to say, uh, to solidify the message that they've started now and not to give up. So my advice to anybody, if you, if you are wanting to do something but nervous about it, just put a date in the calendar and say, right, by this day, I will have done this. And if that's a step towards doing it or they're doing it for the first time, do that and you'll be amazed at the results you get. I love that. I love that so much. I think that's an amazing thing to leave people with. And also, volunteering does so much for an individual's own happiness and longevity of life, your confidence. So I'd highly recommend that anybody goes and does some volunteering, even if it's just a, a little bit every now and then it will make a massive difference so thank you for the work that you do for other people thank you for spending your time with us here today thank you to all the listeners and um, i know you'll have enjoyed it but if you have please do share it with your friends followers fans and even the people that you don't like because everybody needs a little bit of help every now and then <laughs> <laughs> so sean once mm-hmm. again thank you so much for being here um i hope you've enjoyed this conversation as much as i have I have very much so, Natalie. Thank you very much for inviting me on. No, amazing. Thank you. Um, thank you once again to all the listeners, and we will see you on the next one. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>